we have the same thing on like teams and all, all the other like uni uh applications we use just yeah it's all right. that. i'm i'm just glad we we have this conversation and have, like all the so where are you from a couple things where are you from originally because so slovenia you sound awfully american to be in slovenia <laughs> did you spend well, time here thanks for compliments i guess um well um it's not slovenia it's slovakia uh, oh so slovakia yeah oh okay. yeah, I'm so I can... in the, uh sorry i'm i'm currently in the uh in Bratislava, I'm I'm living here. I'm studying here. I moved originally from Serbia, so that's that's where I'm originally from, from a like a small town called Kovacica. I'm I'm I i do not think you'd be familiar with it, but that that's all fine. Like not even the locals of Serbia know where it is, so it's fine. Well, no, no, it's it's interesting because I was looking. I'd spent a little part of my morning looking up some of the history on Slovenia. <laughs> <laughs> and, right. and, and now that I'm looking at the Slovakia, the flags are almost identical. Yeah, there's only just like w the one uh, emblem on it. That's that makes the difference. That's that's literally the only difference. Yeah, that's you know, it. That's yeah, it's still a red, white, and blue flag, or sorry, white, blue, and red flag, uh, and still the little crest in the corner. Yeah, they're almost identical. In fact, from a distance, you'd never know them apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's. <laughs> We're, it's unfortunate that we have so many similarities, even the name and like the flag. <laughs> even the ah, language that's is all right. Similar. So Slovakia, yeah. got it. All right. Slovakia, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to offend. Uh, like you're one of those people that's no, like, no, no, don't you dare call me Slovenian. Believe me, it happens more more often than you'd think. Uh, oh, now that I'm looking yeah. at, it, no, I think even the architecture. I'm looking at the pictures of Slovakia, <laughs> and the architecture is very similar to. Yeah. It, it, have you ever been to like Prague or Czech in general? I have not. Um, have you ever seen like the architecture of it and like the style yeah. of it? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's very similar except on like a smaller scale. I've been to Prague like uh, this year, like a couple of months ago, um, and imagine just like Prague and the architecture of Prague just shrunk down like three times. Got that's, it. That's basically it. Slovenia is like more mountainous. We have like a lot of folklore co culture and like mountainous areas, like hiking and all that. And uh, yeah, it's it's it would be a very long. <laughs> it would take very long for me to explain like what gotcha, the culture. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, the other thing was you're wearing a uh, a very retro forty five uh, RPM record insert on your necklace. Necklace there. Wait, what is that? It. Wait, 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 what's it? What's it made out of? I it's ceramic. I thought it was just like a tribal thing. I I didn't even oh, know. Oh, oh, you know what? I'm gonna put a picture of this in. Uh... <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on. Well, it might be ceramic, but hang on. Let me. If I type in a uh, 45 R RPM insert. Uh, yeah, yeah. And here, let me let me click on here. I'll, I'll send you the link. Watch this. Sure thing. So I know you're probably put probably gonna get rid of it now. So if you click on that um on that link. Uh, it's it's not loading for some reason. I, I can I can like check it out later. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, check I'll, it out. No, that's a that's a forty five RPM record insert. So if you know the old records, like forty fives, yeah, so yeah. there were twelve twelve inches and then there was little forty fives, but they didn't make them with a tiny little hole in the center. What they did was they used these little plastic inserts that you would stick in the in the middle of the record, yeah. and then it would, it would fit on the thing. So that yeah, that's what it is. Okay, well if that's it, that's that makes it even more cool. Thanks for letting me know. I was yeah, yeah. trying to find the meaning of this thing <laughs> for like the I, longest time. You're wearing that. I mean, even even I had you know growing up didn't have a lot of those. We were records were being phased out as I was be, you know going into high school. So yeah. Well, I, I got this for my brother, but he didn't even know what it was. He just got it from like you know, 10 to 15 ish year ago. And then I just like swiped it. I liked it. So just put it around my neck and now I got it. That's very, very cool. So anyway, how did you uh, so you're you've got a class you're doing a thing for? Uh, yeah, I, I guess to introduce myself, I know a bit about you. I've. I've at least like I read about you from like the Wikipedia articles and I've been watching your Flat Earth 
uh, flat, flat earth clues videos yeah. just uh, as well i need it for research because i'm i'm doing i'm uh, i'm a student uh i uh, I'm currently learning, uh, like I'm studying teaching of English language and philosophy. Oh, well, and that explain I, why you why you got it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah that's why I'm doing it. Um, and this is my third year, and I might have undersold it a bit in the email that I'm doing a paper on it. I'm actually doing my paper's thesis on this. Nice. So this, like this, this conversation is like very valuable to me. I'm glad to have this conversation. I'm, oh yeah. I'm, to discuss these kind of ideas and it's basically on like the epistemology of flat earth in particular it, it deals with like epistemology epistemological uh subjects and special like you need to describe all of them and then like uh point out the characteristics and like tie them all to the ideologies right. you're, you're studying and I pretty much like chose Flat Earth because I, I was familiar with it. It, it started kind of influencing my social media, like I think like half a decade ago, I think like five years ago, 2014, 2015. Yep. I started seeing it and like I became interested in it because it kind of was strange to me that this this movement would even surface at like this time and uh right i i don't i seen a lot of forum posts on it and i didn't really know what to think of it like i didn't know uh what the consensus consensus was or like what the what the main ideas were on until i like started researching it very recently so sure. um if you have like any questions about like the topics we're about to i, I prepared like i have like Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Questions. Go ahead. Let's just let's just get right to it. Right. Yeah. So I guess if you have any other questions for me based on like what I've said so far, then feel free to just let um, me know. Only yeah. what what university? Just because I'm curious. It's uh, the Comenius University in Bratislava. Oh, OK, cool. It, it, All right. Well, the, again, the, this is not the first time I have done this for a student. So, really? oh yeah, I've done it in a number of countries all over the place. So whatever, you know, just throw it at me. Nothing's off the table. There are no out of bound questions. Uh, right. There is nothing that is taboo in my opinion. So come on, right. I, I wake up my day with flat earth. So what could be weirder? <laughs> so, and, right. and I'll be putting That's links good. in for you uh, into Skype that will be there later. Like I just put the flat earth, sun, moon and zodiac clock app. Uh, the Flat Earth Friend Miter app, and the, as we're talking, like I'll put in like Flat Earth models. Did you ever see the documentary, the Netflix documentary? Ah, uh, no, but I heard great things about it. I, I yeah, saw yeah, a couple. Yeah. I think I saw a couple of reviews of it, saying it was like a pretty interesting watch, but oh, yeah. not not didn't uh, really delve into it. I will put in here as well. Uh, I'll put the links to anything. So yeah, fire fire away. You right, go ahead, hit me with whatever you got. Uh, so I guess I, I'd have like a couple of introductory questions for you just like to get them, get them out of the way. Um, I guess like how did you get into the movement uh, in the first place? Like that, that's, that's the main thing that interesting, like why would anyone get into this? I first got into it because I was older and I had never got married or had kids and so I had a lot of free time on my hands and I had looked and because I was older I was there when the internet was young <laughs> when you could actually finish when you could finish the internet <laughs> you could basically you could go everywhere it's like well there right. is it. that's all there is on the internet today yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And because of that, I looked at just about every conspiracy you could think of, went down about every rabbit hole you could think of, and I had an opinion on, on all of them. And But everyone in the conspiracy world knows about Flat Earth. Nobody wants to look at it because, well, it's stupid. <laughs> Why would you look at it? Everybody knows it's the globe, right? It's the only th uh, conspiracy we de debunk to children. And so I just happened to be really bored one summer in 2014 and looked at a video uh, by a guy in Germany, uh, and I can't remember the name. Well, it would, it's hard, tough to pronounce anyway. It was just some weird title for his YouTube channel. And he was talking about Flat Earth, and I thought that was really, really interesting. But what caught me was when I clicked on it, I was physically embarrassed to click on it. And I thought, wow, that's really weird. I mean, I'm older, and I've been on the Internet a long time, and I've clicked on a lot of weird stuff, right? Stuff you shouldn't be clicking on. <laughs> and nothing embarrassed me. 
and I was in a closed room with the windows shut, right? <laughs> Nothing should have been. And I'm going, why am I physically flushed when I clicked on this thing? And I knew right there, it's like, wow, there's something, something special about this. So I started, I still hated it. So I dug into it for the, the next nine months. And like the, I said in the documentary and in the clues, uh, in February of 2015, I had this weird moment where I woke up in the middle of the night and I said, you know what? I'm going the other way with this. I'm going to make a series of videos. I'm going to put it out on the internet with my name and all my contact info because that's smart. <laughs> I never recommend women do that to this day. And <laughs> it's like, don't do that. It's one of the things you don't do. Here's my phone number and my address, my social security number. Uh, and what was interesting was I thought that some academics would would come back at me and say, okay, you're absolutely way off base. Here's why. And they didn't. In fact, I had all these other people contacting me, people from the military and pilots and engineers and air traffic controllers and all these people. And they're all on the on my YouTube channel. And they they said, okay, it's not crazy. Here's why. You know, kind of like they couldn't see the forest for the trees. They didn't, they understand. And so that's how I got into it. Uh, and and it, I had so much positive reinforcement that here we are six years later, uh, a couple of books on Amazon, 400, 500 interviews, um, a TV commercial, a Netflix documentary, all this fun stuff, you know, conferences. I, I lost count of how many conferences and meetups, hundreds and hundreds of things that we've done and, and how many people I couldn't be millions, millions of people. I don't know how many because most of them won't come out of the closet. It's flat earth is this weird thing because even when even when you're into it, it's like this secret. It's like, yeah, man, you into flat earth. <laughs> it's like nobody, very few people wear the t-shirts and the hats and the stuff like that. They they uh, they stay really. I've got family members that that are into flat earth, but they won't come out because they're afraid of of friends and family and coworkers. So anyway, yeah. there you go. I guess that's like the nature of conspiracy theories because I like. Uh... I did. I do watch like a couple of channels that do talk about conspiracy theories, but they do it in like a very different way. They yeah. do it in a way where they're all like, "Okay, this is just theory. I'm just like spitballing here. I'm gonna like present you a few theories that I have read upon, and like that that sort of stuff." Wow. And it, it's always interesting to see like other perspectives on it, even though I don't necessarily like. I can't take that leap of faith. I'm like, I can't disassociate myself with it. Yeah, but. It's 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 all a matter of like perspective and belief and like how how uh, how strongly do you believe in the things you you read or like the sources you get. Right. Uh, I guess a follow up question to that would um, I from the brief like skimming of the Wikipedia article on you, I saw that it was it it marked you as like a representative of the flat Earth community. Like, yeah. do you even consider yourself as like a mem like a representative of like someone you can go to for uh, the main oh theory. yeah 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 definitely i am i am one of the guys you go to uh i am the um i call myself you know flat earth was a university and we have our own flag and i should probably send it to you um, yeah right i saw which, that yeah <laughs> which is um the uh i would be the, like the freshman recruiter i get you in the door I say, here's why you should look at Flat Earth University. There's this building over here and this building over here, and we're doing all sorts of fun activities. Really, really great. And then I send you on your way. You know, you look at some of my, you look, basically, I have the pamphlet, right, in my hands. And then once you're done with the pamphlet, you go and do your stuff. And, and you get yeah. into more advanced topics. I am the 101 of, of Flat Earth. No, no question. Uh, and I don't mind that. And so, so when people say, oh, he's king of Flat Earth and he's the Lord of Flat Earth. No, 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 none of that. No, I get you in the door. And then I'm the guy, you, you know, this from university where you run into people like third year students and fourth year students that say, oh yeah, my first year I was really into such and such, but now I'm, now I'm focusing on this. I'm the such and such guy. <laughs> I'm the guy. It's like, oh yeah, I hear this so often. It's like, Oh yeah, Mark Sargent, I was into him. Yeah, but now I'm really into, you know, Jaredism and Globebusters and David Weiss and those guys. Like, eh, it's fine. I, I don't mind. Because the good news about that is everyone knows who at least the hell I was. Uh, right. But uh, but when, when it comes to the advanced stuff, I give you usually the 50,000 foot overview. So. Yeah, that 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 much I could gather. Like, so you're the you're the guy that had seen the most things, right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm and and because again, I've tried to tell other people in my community this, which is 
because the media is so lazy, uh, once you do a few of the a few interviews, they will always look you up first. It's like you know, if, right. if anyone in the media world uh, uh, wants to talk to you, they they look up. You know, they they don't want to look up. Try to hunt for somebody for thirty minutes. They, it's like whoever comes up in the first three pages. It's like, and then they listen. I, I've heard this. It's like, oh yeah, they listen to like five minutes of an interview I've done. It's like, oh yeah, let's get that guy. And and so it just it just kept going. So I I feel bad because people, why does he always get the interviews? I go because I was the one that got the interviews in the first place. And once you get a, a certain number of interviews, uh, you always uh, will get more because the, the producers are always you know they don't they like sure things. You know what I mean? They don't yeah. like an unknown. It's like, well, let's pick some unknown guy that we've never had an interview before. No, no. It's like, well, he, he does fine. We need sound bites. Let's use him. So I'm, I'm the guy. Most yeah, the, I mean, the, the, from, from the things that I've seen, you do do a very comprehensive look at, at like the theory and the, like, I, I look, it's I don't what, it's, what, it's what I do. I mean, this is, this is, I mean, I've been doing this now pretty solid for six years. I mean, I could be drunk and half dead and probably still pull off an interview. In fact, the, the one I, I've done interviews where I've had no sleep uh, and my voice is shot and, you know, I can see it can't can't lights go on. It's like, OK, let's let's do, you know, the show must go on. So, right. So anyway, so I guess. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, you're, you're good. You're good. Uh, I guess like since you said to yourself that you've like seen a lot of things and know a lot about the theory and like all the all the different branches of like the flat earth community mm -hmm. like what's your overall like opinion on flat earth or like how do you see it nowadays uh well it was the hottest thing ever i for i mean for at least four from 2015 to 2019 before this whole pandemic thing happened you couldn't stop us it was okay. it was so big that in 2019, I'll give you an idea. In 2019, I think I did conferences in seven countries, a TV commercial in Australia. Uh, I was on my way to do another TV commercial in London for for McDonald's. Uh, it we we had meetups. Meetups could happen all over the place. It was just incredible. The the stuff we were doing. Every major YouTube channel had done a um uh a, a flat earth video at some point it doesn't matter who it was i mean you could look it up you want to have some fun type type I, in i think uh, i watched all of them back in like four years ago <laughs> oh yeah 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 i mean type in like pewdiepie flat earth the yeah. fact that that he would do multiple flat earth videos right what the hell uh people were just latching on to the topic because the the big the heavy hitters in media they all look and see what's trending and youtube was trending or, or flat earth was trending so much that at some point YouTube had to change its algorithms to adjust for us. And I mean, there was a government Senate hearing where we were brought up. And, and it's like, again, it's not, we're not talking about us. It's not, I wasn't the, you know, it's not like anyone targeted me. It's the topic. It's yeah. like, you know, it's like, nobody should be talking about this. It's like, okay, but they are. So why? I mean, they even removed uh, the, um, the, the search results line from YouTube. The, so it said search results equals a number. They re, they they removed that entirely from YouTube. So yeah, we were we couldn't be we couldn't have been any bigger. And now the whole conspiracy world, the whole truth or community is in jeopardy because everything's locked down. Because you know, like conferences, we you remember if, if you're in my community, you don't go to com you can't find a venue that doesn't require masks. So what do you do? I mean, you're you're stuck. So anyway, so no. The 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 good news about flat Earth is it's never it never went away. Um, last year there was a conference in uh, North Carolina, and I remember talk speaking at it. I opened it and I asked the audience. I said, "How many people are here for the first time?" Eighty five percent at least of the audience raised their hand. So yeah, it's just it's, it's, a lot of other people had time on their hands to, to research. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, yeah, the rabbit hole. Heck, the documentary came back into circulation yeah. uh, on Netflix because there were all so many people at home watching Netflix. You know, burning through. It's like, what haven't we watched on Netflix? I mean, I've watched stuff nowadays I would have never watched before. I've just got I got series like, oh wow, I can think I'm going to watch all five seasons of this series. I would never have even looked twice at before. Oh. Anyway, so, as far as I understand it, you came into this like very skeptical, like not wanting to believe it, but then you like fell into the rabbit oh, hole. Oh, I used to collect antique globes. 
Oh. That was one of my things. I I was a big – remember, I'm older, so bric-a-brac and little trinkets. I love that, you know, all sorts of stuff. And I was fascinated with antique clubs. I, I covered my my walls when I was out in Colorado with um, world maps. And the joke was I go, if I ever wake up, you know, if I ever get a head injury, I'll know where I am because I'll just look at the wall. It's like, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm on Earth, right? <laughs> so no one – would have been a harder sell than me. I was so irritated when I figured this thing out that uh, you know I'm st- you know banging my head on the keyboard going there's no way there's no way there's no way. But then again, I also read a lot of science fiction in my lifetime. And even before years and years before the 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 flat earth thing was happening, you know, when the whole matrix and the 13th floor because remember for me it's not just flat. It's also enclosed. You're talking about you're living in a big snow globe. And if it's a snow globe, it's probably virtual because all the worlds that we create in, in our technology, whether it be Fortnite or GTA or Warcraft or whatever it is, Minecraft, ugh, uh, they're all based on boxes. You know, they're, they're enclosed systems. You know, they're not even, they're not even dome. The, they may portray a dome, but computers can't draw circles. You know, it's all right angles. So everything's everything's in boxes, and so uh, it wasn't it wasn't that much of a stretch once I figured it out. It's like oh, it was always one of the possibilities. We've written a, we've written just about every possibility there can be in science fiction. We've written them all. So it's kind of like the lottery tickets, right? One of them's gonna be right. <laughs> it's it's just a question of which one. I mean, we've done. I mean, how many Twilight Zone episodes and Outer Limits episodes and Black Mirror and all these other you know that we've covered. You know, it's like, oh yeah, this could this could be the the actual reality, right? Well, again, one of them was gonna be the actual reality. We just didn't know which one. And in this case, I think it's the snow globe one. So. All right. Well, yeah, <laughs> that yeah that that well more than covers covers what I wanted to ask. So thank you. Um, <laughs> I guess we we might be able to transfer to to, to philosophy now, or okay. like the questions of the of the topic i guess sure. sort of an introductory question again but like how acquainted are you with the uh, philosophy and uh, epistemology or like how do you even consider them like a uh like a basis of how you form your beliefs or give me give me an example i'm a i consider myself to be a very philosophical person but as far as reading the classics nah, not so much i mean but i've got a lot of views on god and the universe and how everything works you know if we're talking about like you know if we're getting to the questions of who built this and yeah. what what lies outside of this Type yeah. of things. Oh yeah, I, I've answered that many times, and I've got some pretty strong opinions on it. Right. Yeah. So I don't think I can like cover all of philosophy in like a brief <laughs> no, introduction. No, no, no. Give me give me an example of what would lead me in a in a direction, and I'll. Uh, well, for instance, epistemology or like the thing I'm writing on uh, deals with it's a subsection of philosophy, or like it's a theoretical field. Mm-hmm. Could you could consider it? sort of a science but it stays in the theoretical field because it's not really it doesn't study things it just brings forth theories and my professor is going to watch this afterwards so i hope hopefully i got everything right uh, but epistemology okay. okay. deals with um uh well it deals like how do you justify your beliefs like uh what 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 forms your beliefs or like the function of how you argue to get gotcha to gotcha no that's patient. perfect no, I know exactly how to. Uh, I would give you. I, I'll give you a great example. Um, when it comes to, let's just look at conspiracies in general. How do I justify any conspiracy? How do I look at a conspiracy and say, is this valid, and why do I think it's valid? <laughs> it's going to sound arrogant when I say this, but if I can't improve on it, it's probably valid. Meaning most conspiracy people, when they look into the the dark world, the secret internet world of of the Illuminati and the Bilderbergs and the Rothschilds and and all that stuff out there, they look at um, they 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 never look past the surface. It's always just we're good. Everyone else out there is evil, right? You know, and and the black hats run run the world, right? You know, they twirl their handlebar mustaches and and they they sit in dark rooms around large tables and they all smoke, and they they, they say sinister things. And for me, it's 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 I'm one of the rare people that says no 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 no. 
Why are they doing this? Don't forget about what the conspiracy is. Why is the conspiracy happening? And does it accomplish, because they're not doing it just for evil. It's not like super villains, you know? It's like, we're going to take over the world. Yeah. No, they're doing it for the greater good. Usually, and what I mean is they make decisions at a level that 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 people, other people can't make the decisions, meaning they are morally flexible. So would you kill, a, you know, the old, the old, um, the old question, would you chill? In fact, there's experiments based on this. You know, would you kill a child to, to cure cancer? Right. Yeah. Trial problem, yeah. 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 Well, some people would, some people wouldn't. But then you do the impossible questions like, would you kill your own child to cure cancer? And if you really look at the movies, which is why the movies always drove, I was the guy who was like, no, we've got to risk this entire group of people to save that one person on that mountain. And I'm like, the hell you are. <laughs> it's like, no, that's not how it works, right? But in the movies, it's like, the romantic no. thing, you know. <laughs> no, the needs of the many always outweigh the needs of the few, right? The greater good applies. The greater good is how it works. At the highest level, that's how it works. And that's how, what, how they make their decisions. That's, in fact, from why I've determined that's what most conspiracies are based off of, is that they're doing something for the greater good and you don't like it because you may suffer. You know, you you may be part of the, the collateral damage. Look, pawns on the chessboard get knocked off all the time, but the game goes on. So when I look at a conspiracy, I look at them and I say, okay, do the ends justify the means? And it doesn't matter what the means are. The means may be horrible. You know, and, and I know there are people outside. It's, no, you got to hold the line. You've got to do a certain thing for a certain thing. It's like, no, it's a numbers game. It's all about the greater good. So that's what, when I looked at the, the whole flat earth concept, that's what I was looking at. When I looked at their decisions, like, okay, why did you hide this? Why did you do this? Why did you do this? And everything, I'm not kidding you. Everything I looked at made sense from if you put yourself in their shoes. It's like, would I have made that move? Uh, even, even the fact of hiding it, you know, um, if you don't find it, we're talking about a world here that even our best and brightest didn't figure it out until about 1960 because we just didn't have the tech. We didn't have the planes. We didn't have the, 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 the technology to actually physically figure out our world. And, you know, that's about when NASA was founded, by the way. And if you found out in 1960, would you tell people? That simple question, right? That I have put this to many a journalist. Would you tell people? And and the, ner the journalist knee jerk response like, well, the people have a right to know. Like, no, they don't. <laughs> no, <laughs> they don't. There, the there's an old saying by an American president back in World War II, which is only give the people as much truth as they can handle, and nothing more, because there are some things that are just too big. I mean, you've run this with people. I mean, the average person, if you give them too much truth, they freak out. They don't know how to handle it. Um, Roswell would have been a great example. You know, the whole Roswell uh, alien thing in New, New, New Mexico. That story started circulating in newspapers. Remember, there was no television. So that started going in the newspapers and people started losing it, like right away. I mean, or you remember, uh, I know you're too old to remember the, uh, but you probably know the concept, the War of the World's radio show. Oh, so, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, where, you know, that was a fake radio show that they broadcast on the East Coast, just in New York, and people yeah. just freaking lost their minds. They were right outside with shotguns and, you know, flashlights, like, we're the freaking aliens. So, um, anyway, that that's how I justify it. I look at things from both sides of the, the, the chessboard, and I say, is what they're doing making sense to them? You know, whereas the average person is like, no, they're doing this because they're evil, horrible people and all they want to do, you know, they're, they're sadists. It's like, no, no, most of the time they're doing it because they want to accomplish a greater goal that you disagree with. And uh, and if I could improve on their plan, if I can't improve on their plans, you know, but which is why when I look at other conspiracies, that's how I judge any conspiracy. If I look at a conspiracy and say, that doesn't even make sense because <laughs> why, why, why the hell you would even do something like that, then – then I just kind of wave it off. I've got an opinion on just about every conspiracy you can think of. Unless some I like, some I don't like. A lot I don't like. But when it comes to certain things, going, yeah. Yeah. And and a lot of people, I don't like to hear it. It's like, look, there's an objective truth out there, which which the average person just doesn't the, – the, there's a comfort zone for most people. And everything inside their comfort zone, they're fine with. 
and and it really varies from person to person. So sorry, I'm I was rambling there a little bit at the that's, end. That's, but that's great. I'm you, does really this kind of kind of help you? Oh yeah, this this helps immensely. Like this this type of conversation is what I was hoping for because I I genuinely did not know like what to expect and oh, also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm well, I mean, really if you're looking so. at something this big, you have to you have to wrestle with some of this stuff in your own head. Yeah, you, you've and got this I mean, this rambling type of conversation. Like, I, I don't mean it in a bad way. This is incredible. Uh, just, just like let your thoughts out. That I'm here for you. You're you're in the center stage. Okay. Um, I guess uh, I would have like a couple of questions on on what you said. I sure. uh, from what I understand is like. You're justifying this sort of worldview because you're in the pursuit of the greater truth, if, right. if, if that's if that's correct, right? But you keep mentioning, you constantly keep mentioning like them or like they control something or right. they from perspective of them. Right. Who exactly are you mentioning here? If, if that's yeah. that, no, that's a perfect follow-up question, which is uh, they, which is of course the the one of the big questions, at least in 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 our tier which is who controls the world and one of the the first rule of power number one rule of power has never changed which is stay hidden meaning right. you cannot napoleon i think was the one of the guys that said this he was very quotable actually for a little guy which was he said um never put yourself in a position where you can be overthrown which means which is the curse and the blessing of being the puppet master you can't be on stage and be off stage at the same time. So you're either in the light or you're controlling things because the, it is, it again, they can't, the mob can't, the people cannot revolt against you. They cannot target you if they don't know who you are. Right. And so it, presidents and kings and, uh, you know, ambassadors and all, any of anyone with the title, they're all public, right? They've been put there for a reason. They are cannon fodder. Uh, you know, the president of the United States, oh, oh, he's the most powerful man in the free world. My ass he is. He's, he's, he is octaves below whoever, you know. But again, the big question is who, and, and in fact, you know it's working because if you ask the average truther, um, who are the top 10 groups of, of power in the world in order of importance? No one will come up with the same list. I mean, it, I mean, I, I always rattle off some just for the hell of it, right? What, uh, Council of Foreign Relations, the Bilderberg Group, the Rothschilds, the Trilateral Commission, the Vatican, the Masons, uh, the Jewish Cabal. It just goes on and on and on. I mean, and so which now I, I, I mean, you throw in the Illuminati only because it's been in movies recently. Um, but again, nobody knows, right? I, I usually call them, though, the authority, which is really old money. Let's call it that. People that don't, I mean, people talk about like Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and Bill Gates. That's new. In fact, not, that's not just new money. That's the newest money, right? Those guys, it's fine. They're wealthy, but they don't have the really old political connections. We're talking centuries old, you know, for even America. America is new compared to, we're talking European power. That's what we're talking about. America is... <laughs> America's in trouble right now anyway, but, but, <laughs> the, but European power, you know, old, old European, uh, uh, families, those are the ones that control people with bank accounts that are so huge that, um, uh, that money is meaningless to them. The calculator breaks if you try to count well, it, it just, it's just, it's, it's pointless it, because they move, they move money around, but they could collapse economies whenever, whenever they wanted. Um, I mean, come on, even the Rothschilds didn't become extremely powerful until um, after the War of 1812. You know, the whole, eight, you know, um, uh, Napoleon thing, you know, with that, I mean, that whole, that whole thing. So uh, that's who runs it. But again, who, who exactly, exactly those people are. Can you remember, they also change, you know, their names change. Are they yeah. part of the same family? Do they elect people? Is it, you know, do they have these weird meetings in the middle of, of Europe <laughs> where, where it's like, okay, you're going to be running the show for the, you know, what are the protocols? Don't know because there's so these are these are there's so many levels of secrecy that you don't I mean, again, but it's deliberate. So that's who we're talking about. There's an ethereal they though. It's very very real. Of course it is, because think think about this. Do you really think that it doesn't matter if it's Trump or let's say Biden? Do you really think Biden 
has a briefcase. Again, this is something we pushed to people for a number of years, that like the, the nuclear briefcase, right? Which is, you really think there's a briefcase that you can put in front of him and he can just push the big red button and launch the rockets. You really think he's got that sort of power? No, he doesn't. Like it's think a, so, uh, it's, there's more precautions than that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a wonderful concept because you put that out there and then all of a sudden he becomes, you know, you, you, you make these people very public because you don't want the real power to be known because real power can be criticized. You know, if all of a sudden it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, it's this king in the middle of Bulgaria, <laughs> you know, that, that, that whatever, whatever country, right, you know, that or this family, it's like all of a sudden you're starting to start looking at them. You're going to start microscoping them. So there you go. Right. Uh, I guess uh, to, to follow up that, uh, how do you even like put yourself in the shoes of some ethereal entity and make sense of what would make sense to them then? Like how, uh, how do you how do you? justify their beliefs when you don't exactly like know who they are oh, oh it's e that's easy that's easy well it's easy for me because um the, as the song goes everybody wants to rule the world right <laughs> but very few people have thought about it meaning really thought about it and i and i this is going to make me sound horrible uh <laughs> but you've got to think like a villain Meaning you've got to think like a, like like Specter from James Bond, or you 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 have again. It's one of it's something I've always had, which is empathy, which is you put yourself in the other person's shoes. It doesn't matter who that is, right? Whether it be you know your your best friend, a, a, a di person of a different gender, who or a political organization, and you have to say, what would I do if this? So if I wanted to rule the world. <laughs> what would I do? And and you have to you, you have to think bigger. You know, you have to think like it's like, all right, what would I do if, if you were given that sort of power? Again, power for men, it's easier because men uh, at the highest levels always crave power. And that's all they want. The line from the Matrix, you know, what do men with power want? More power. That's all they that's it's addictive. It's the most addictive drug there is when you get up to certain levels. So if you wanted to run the world, well, it's trickier than you might think because there's a lot of um, macro and micro issues you have to deal with. But the big scoping questions, uh, people, a lot of people in the general public, they don't go down those roads because it's it's dark. There's some things you, you don't want to think about. It's like, oh, yeah, by the way, we're going to have to let this economy collapse. Oh, by the way, we're going to have to wipe out this industry. You know, there's, there's things that you moves you make that there is physical and emotional damage that occurs. But I mean, and come on, military generals do that all the time. It's kind of a military way of thinking. It's it's strategic. It's very, you know, you're looking at the world like a board and you're trying not to be personal. It's like, yeah, I feel bad for that pawn over there because, you know, it's going to get wiped out. Right. That pawn is moving forward. It looks like it's doing well. That pawn is doomed. But you try, but you don't think of it like that. You you've got to disconnect emotionally from the uh, from 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 the pawn. So anyway, that that's how I do it. I mean, you 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 try to think as big as you can, and it's it's difficult for some people. But for me, I, because I love strategy, and I love creative problem solving, I try not to take it personally. That's where people most people get hung up, where it was like emo there's too much emotional things kicking in where it's like no i would that i've heard this too many times that's wrong so we shouldn't do it it's like that pawn shouldn't get knocked off the board it's like why not it's like because yeah. it's wrong it's the wrong thing to do it's like no it's not the wrong thing to do if you We're can't if, at this point <laughs> yeah if you can't yeah if you yeah exactly if you can't remove the 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 emotions from it then there's then you're never going to be able to do it so yeah all right that's uh yeah that's great uh but Maybe what I was aiming for when when I asked like how do you justify your beliefs, uh, I want wanted to go maybe on like a deeper level. Okay. And this might sound like a very <laughs> very strange question. No. Because it's it's all philosophical it, it's questions. A, it's a like, flat earth interview. How how strange could it be? <laughs> that's that's true, I guess. Um, well, the question would be how do you know the things you know? How do you trust the what basis do you oh uh, oh 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 when it, like when it comes to what what decisions they would make no i mean like you as a person like oh. when you when you wake <laughs> up in the 
see the sky is blue. How do you justify your belief that the sky is blue? For instance, like that's that's oh. like the basic question. Like, how do you know the things you know? How do you justify well, them? Uh, yeah, that's a tricky one because again, perception is relative, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of things. I perception is very very tricky, and we know this from. A whole bunch of different experiments. Uh, the the thing again, you're probably old enough to remember the the white dress black dress argument that that came up some years ago, where you see the picture on the screen and you got your buddy sitting right next to you and he's going, "It's a white dress," and you're going, "It's a black dress," right? And if you have, you have ten people and seven people say it's black and three say it's white, who's right? Because both could pass lie detector tests. Right. So does the it, just because the majority say it's black, does that make it black? Um, for me, uh, I try to I try to be as objective as I can when when it comes to my beliefs. So when I look up and say, "Well, the sky is blue," I'm like, "All right," well, you know, not to get into the whole define what blue is. Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> no, but no, but no. we see this in too many things, which is beauty is in the the eye of the beholder, and that's too simple a saying. But let's say that every perception is in the eye of the beholder, meaning. I love I love um, all media and I love movies and it's like yeah Titanic won best picture and cleaned up on the Oscars right and yet there are still people out there that swear it is the worst movie ever made so who's right okay you know it's like it's like you know it won every award you could ever think of and I there were people and it stayed in the theaters longer than just about any mainstream movie that ever was in in modern history and yet there are still people i know guys guys just simple men right blue collar guys saying yeah i'm never going to watch that movie like why not and it's like because i know the ending right it's what the ship goes down that's the whole equivalent of the movie <laughs> it's like that's your percent that's your take on it it's like yeah the boat sinks why why would everyone watch that it's like oh god and and i've heard this many many times so, Wait, again, <laughs> so I never heard that perspective before. To be honest. Yeah, it's weird, but I have run into a lot of guys that have said this. Guys, never women. Women watch that thing to death. I've seen so many women cry and cry and cry. It was so sad when he died. Um, but anyway, no, for me, it's just try. I try to find an objective uh, truth, and and I also, but I also will try to you know look at other people and see. I'm a big believer in not just learning from my own mistakes and perceptions, but learning from other people's perceptions. So, like I, I have prided myself by never, you know, like you see a kid over here as a thing, right? You put a penny in a light socket, you know, you see like a five year old put a penny, he gets shocked, right? right? <laughs> and yet the kid right next to him might do the same damn thing, right? Because he doesn't, he, it's not, it's not clicking. It's like, well, it probably wouldn't happen to me. It's a fluke, right? It's like, and it says the same thing. He gets shocked too. No, no, no. I'm the guy that looks, it's like, yeah, I'm not putting the penny there. <laughs> I'm not doing it. It's like, I, and I've seen that I, I try to do this. I have learned from so many other people picking up things. So I, I try to, that, that kind of forms my perception on top of it. Yeah. And then it's of accumulate knowledge over time and then try oh to yeah yeah well what, well yeah well come on the, the old saying the, the price of wisdom is time yeah. straight up you cannot you cannot accelerate that you have to learn from experience there's some things that can be taught there's some things that have to be lived and yeah. i know that i know that varies uh but when it comes to uh, the world at large there's an old old saying which is which i have learned only recently i was very naive growing up which was because I grew up on an island in the middle of nowhere. It was like very, 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 very sheltered. Right. So I didn't believe that even people could lie. That's the big thing, which is you've got to go. We, the, the saying is, which is kind of positive. It's like trust everyone, but count your change. Because if you blindly trust people and they know this, human beings will con you. They will deceive you. There are tons and tons and tons of layers of deception out there. Um, we'll rattle them off real quick. I mean, so there's a group of people out there, a pretty large group actually, that think there are no conspiracies, right? And that, that, that people don't lie ever about anything. The me And the news definitely wouldn't lie to you. The, the media would never lie. And it's like, so there's no deception in um, politics or business or sports or entertainment or I don't know, journalism and science, right? 
all I could spend a day on any one of those topics and tell you how many times. Look, people lie. They the, the there's a great line from uh, you remember the um, uh, one of the Batman movies, where is um, uh, people are as only as good as the system allows them to be. People. I, and the, the line, in fact, I did this in the clues. I think I, I pretty much, I think I talked talked about one of these, which yeah, was I think, I think I the stop the, the stoplight the stoplight one, where it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like stoplights. People run stoplights all the time until you put a camera up there. Then they don't run stoplights. And and in fact, I've run into situations where when they know the camera is broken, they'll start running the stoplights again. It's like why? Because if they can get away with it, they will. That's what, and you have, people have to, that's the other side, the flip side. You, people have to learn from that. I have learned so much where now we've gotten to the point when my friend David, he's kind of, one of the new terms out there is auto hoaxing, which is, if you don't know, if you never heard that auto hoaxing is that everything's a conspiracy and, <laughs> and that, that it, it basically guilty until proven innocent, but he's not wrong. Meaning, if you're watching, if it's on mainstream media, there's got to be an ulterior motive. Uh, and, and it comes from an old, old saying, which is, things are rarely what they first appear to be. Right? And that's very, very true. I mean, we run into that all the time. You look at something, it's like, oh, I had, how many times we say this in our lives? I had no idea that that was actually the case. You know, uh, you know Thomas Jefferson, our second president, big slave owner. Right? No, he's like, <laughs> John Wayne, right, smoked a lot of dope, <laughs> but because he, you know, he played a cowboy, uh, um, Knight Rider, uh, one of my, you know, the, one of that television show from the eighties was was <laughs> supposed to be a Saturday morning kids show, right? Oh, okay, that and, makes sense. And but it tested so well with adults that they just like, hey, you know what? We're running at prime time, number one show in America. Yeah. So anyway, between all these things, that forms my beliefs, you know, yeah. trying to see through, uh, you know, try uh, what you can physically observe, what is portrayed to you on a regular basis and what the peer, what your what the people around you think they see. It's this weird blending of the soup. And, be, yeah. and of course, it makes it difficult, which is part of what this world is all about. Once you went, you know, trying to de make your way through that whole sea of whatever, that's it's not easy to do. I mean, and it's constantly evolving. You know, beliefs I have now were definitely not beliefs I had ten years ago. So, yeah, but some of that's... some have stayed. I've I've tried to keep some steady as I've gone along. Well, you know, you you form your opinions over time, and you, it's just it's sort of every every other year that passes my perceptions also get kind of skewed like the the things i believed last year aren't really in in the in oh, the yeah. same space as as they are now yeah. so it's kind of kind of strange to think about but i i guess it kind of makes sense to me when whenever you're again uh, time time will time, time change will, yeah time time uh, will um, change everything again it's the time that that you spend I uh, when I was 25, this is, I I I mean literally. Let's put it this way: I didn't think that anyone lied about anything when I was 22. I think 22 when I saw and I saw JFK in the theater, the the movie, the Oliver Stone movie. Oh. <laughs> I saw JFK like <laughs> apparated in the front of you, just no, just like post of JFK. <laughs> no. No, when when uh, when I saw JFK in the theater, which I, I still consider Oliver Stone's amazing work, and I saw it in a packed house. When I came out of that, my world sort of changed for the first time. Where it's like, okay, so people in power do lie about things, <laughs> and and but again, but growing up in the eighties, if she was a, such a wonderful decade, we were so naive. We didn't. We didn't think everything yeah. was happy and shiny and wonderful. It's like, this is great. <laughs> right? No one thought about it. And then all of a sudden, the, you know, the, the dark, you know, the dark clouds started coming in in the 90s and 2000s. Like, huh. <laughs> so <laughs> pretty much should have appreciated. And we did. But yeah. Uh, but yeah. And after that, that's that's how that was my introduction to it. Remember, the Internet what, wasn't even going to be firing up for the next four, five, eight years. And then the internet came in, and then oh boy, then all sorts of fun, fun little rabbit holes. So uh, anyway, the thing that 
the the thing that uh, kind of struck me is that you you mentioned that you try to look at things object as objectively as you can as, as yeah. like God. Um, but then you kind of mentioned like two two different examples. One is the like the dress one, which I was familiar with yeah. five years ago. Believe me, I still have traumas from it from, from all the description <laughs> of it. I don't want to hear about it again. But yet yeah. here we are. Yeah. And yeah, that that was a phenomenon that was kind of strange to me. Like I didn't really know what to think about it. It, it was just everybody had different opinions and it kind of relied more on your cognition, the, the, the senses you had. Yeah. But in the end, it did have a certain color. It, it Different people saw it differently, but the color of it was, I believe, confirmed in the discussion. Or like oh, the, yeah, 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 yeah. The designer said that, sure. But the, yeah. point, but the bigger point was is that you can, you could give a lie detector test to that one person, you know, that group of people, and they're like, oh, no, no, that's not what I see. Which is just wild. It's freaking absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. Just blows my that's mind. A, that's kind of a weird thing to think about. That you yeah. might did you, did you ever be... watch? Did you ever run into the, the rare people that saw it change? No. Where, where it's, oh yeah, it was, I've run. There's a couple people. Um, one woman in particular where she's seen, and I don't know what was going on in her head, but all of a sudden, she it flipped on her. Yeah, she saw the other color and she just freaked out. It's like, what the hell has happened? <laughs> you know, and and because she didn't under, you know, your mind doesn't know doesn't know yeah, what to do with the it. Are, are, um, are the other thing, freak. sir, let me let me give you a perception thing really quick. Um, there's a wonderful test. the The other thing is, which I I've always found is interesting, is that human beings seem to be almost designed to believe in deception, meaning de designed to fall for simulations. Um, the, the, the easiest example would be, and I'm sure it's happened to you in either a bus or a train or a plane or a car. If you, I, you probably don't have stop and go traffic where you are, but if you're ever sitting in a seat and you don't know if the vehicle next to you is moving or you're moving, um, it happens here with stop and go traffic. Well, everyone, you're zoning out all of a sudden the car next to you is moving. You're like, did I just take my foot off the freaking brake? And you don't know what would happen. And so they did yeah. a study on this where they put people in a wooden car and they either move the car very slowly towards the wall or they move the wall and it turns out that human beings absolutely could not tell what was moving yeah. and which is why simulations work so well you know you flight simulators where you're just you know banking things and tipping things or what you have people that um when they're staring at a like a roller coaster on a television you know roller coaster first person and some people get ill you know, get motion sick just by watching this. I mean, to this day, for whatever reason, the original, this is before your time, the original Mario Kart from uh, uh, Nin Nintendo, Super Nintendo, made me, made me nauseous. And that, was, that wasn't even a, a, you know, a thing. It was, that was a flat surface. But somehow, something that was going on there. Yeah. That happened, yeah. Visually, we have real problems. That is a big human, I wouldn't say it's a weakness, but it seems like we're designed in that way that that visually we've got some we can be manipulated in all sorts of different ways there or that we didn't throw out enough things during our evolution just to just to get that out of it exactly i mean heck you can put i mean there's television warnings on shows now that you could put people in epileptic seizures if you flash oh, yeah, things on the screen you know fast enough so anyway anyway sorry. yeah Go ahead. Uh, where, where Right. Uh, the the other thing you mentioned is the like the Titanic comparison. Like many people have different tastes, but when it comes to like empirically proving something or like proving that like this glass of water is not just like a simulation on your screen that you're seeing right now, but it's right. a physical thing that I can pick up. Yeah, but it could. And, but it could be simulated. Yeah, We've it could be. Got the tech now. We could absolutely do it. I could just be a brain in Nevada. Who knows? <laughs> there you go. There you go. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Right. There's different like ways of identifying like opinion. It's not that one pe person saw the Titanic and thought it was like very bad, and that it didn't he didn't want to watch it because he knew what what he was going to see. Yeah. But it's uh, when it when it comes to this, then object objectively like proving something. Yeah. Uh, how do you like justify this glass of water being here? Or for instance, like your oh, microphone. Oh, oh, okay. 
Uh, like how, the glass water in your room? Uh, or like, for example, the microphone you're holding right now. Like, how do you justify that being here? Why? How do you know it's there? Mm. Uh, <laughs> only because, well, again, I can only go from my perception. Uh, and I will come back to the Titanic in a second. Uh, but it's activating uh, out of the five senses, two or three, at least. Yeah. You know, I can see it. I can touch it. I'm not going to put my tongue on it. I can smell it, uh, but I can't hear it. So yeah, four four out of the five senses. Sure, why not? And it's right in front of me. That's about as good as it's going to get for me. Now, so if it was cool. making a if it was making a beeping sound, the fact that in fact that you it's it's related and tied and tied to your speakers. Yeah, all five senses. Sure, why not? That's about as good as I'm going to get. So you're correlating that to the physical evidence, right? Uh, how about how about this glass of water? How how would you that's, see that? That's how? tougher to do because the only thing I got there is visual. That only touches on one. Now, if it was making a sound, it might be two. But at the same time, I'm not in front of it. And because I've been in the tech world for long enough, I you know yeah, I've got a 99% chance that that uh, because I know the limits of techno our technology, there's only so much we can do there. That the glass of water is probably there. However, I have seen enough simulation simulated that if you spent enough money, which you're not doing, that uh, <laughs> but you know you that that you could fake it if you absolutely wanted to. So, but yeah, so it drops from okay, let's let's drop it from 99.9 .9 to over here to 99 over there. Not a huge drop. Now, if you were all scattered, you know, and if there was a lot of things that was happening in the background, you remember like yeah. this background behind me, that's green screen. Right. So, um, but I used to have a physical one that, you know, right. just, is that green screen? No, I'd be tapping on it. <laughs> and the conspiracy world as a whole is very suspicious as it is. You run people and and I remember there was, I had a cat on my lap for this podcast. <laughs> and there were people that swore that it was a fake cat because it wasn't moving. It was sleeping. Right. And then finally it jumped off and it's like, oh, thank God. But, you know, pe people rush to make assumptions, especially if you're suspicious of something. Again, that's the mob mentality. You rush to make judgments. Uh, so, but anyways, that kind of help. Kind of. Yeah, that, that, that helps. We'll, we'll get into like the mob intelligence or like the group think later. That, that's part of another topic I want to discuss. But okay. I guess to finally like get into the flat earth or like the nitty gritties of oh, it. Wait, wait, wait. Before you do it, let, let, me, let me do the Titanic really fast. Right, which yeah. is, do you know the Titanic, Titanic itself is a conspiracy? Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, look this up if you get a chance. The, um, in fact, it's one I believe in, which is, it's, it's not even a dark conspiracy. It was just a simple case of insurance fraud, which was a lot of people don't know the background to this, which was there was a sister ship called the Olympic, which was first before the Titanic. And the Olympic, because it's, remember, it's a British company, uh, was in the channel and uh, there was in a crowded area with other ships and it got hit by um, uh, a, a British Navy ship. Got hit, you know, like T-boned, you yes. know, and, and it suffered major damage. And because, in, again, you're not probably old enough to remember this, but uh, if certain cars, they're totaled for a reason because if you don't total a car, it never runs right again. Right? You know, the frame's all screwed up and it has a thing. So, and the British government wouldn't pay for the repairs. So they were screwed. I mean, the Olympics, like, it's 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 got a shutter at a certain speed, and they're going, we're never going to be able to do this as a freaking cruise line. So someone came up with the idea. It's like, why don't we take the new ship, swap the names, because it's just freaking paint, you know, <laughs> take the sucker out there, take the Olympic out there, which was really the Titanic, we'll scuttle it, but we'll make it. It's like, well, yeah, well, we don't want people to die. No, no, no. No, we'll have a ship off to the side, you know, with life preservers and blankets, and it'll be just there in the nick of time, right? You know, it'll be just like, oh, look, a ship right there to, to save us. And what happened was, and so they, you know, they, they hit the iceberg. The iceberg didn't even do that much damage. They flooded it on purpose. And what happened was, the, it's, this happened so many times in real life, which is the getaway driver, meaning the, 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 the ship with the blankets, he chickened out. And he's like, <laughs> and he didn't come. He, he was like, no, I'm not, I'm not going to have a part of this. Even though he was fully ready to do it, he backed out. And it's like, they're stuck. That ship's going down. There's people that are going to die. And it was this big cover-up. But that's all it was. It was about money. That's all it was. It was There was nothing. And honestly, and again, I look at it and I was like, yeah. Honestly, I would have. And it starts out with, this, with a simple premise, which is 
the government stiffed them. You know, it's like, you know, you, on, a, on an insurance thing. It's like, look, pay for our freaking repairs. And the government's like, eh, <laughs> it'll be fine. <laughs> and it came back to haunt them because a lot of British citizens died. And the British, you know, government, the government then had to come back in and cover it up to uh, to to save their save face. And and the the one guy that got crucified on this was the the captain of that boat that was supposed to come with the with the life preservers. He was like his career was he was quietly just done <laughs> because they're like because he screwed the whole thing up. Anyway, there you go. So anyway. Well, that's- that's honest. Look, when, whenever I'm listening to these types of like uh, alternative uh, explanations for things, I'm always interested in it. But <laughs> then again, I'm also very, very like source driven. So it, it would take a lot for me to convince myself of this. But it's, it is oh, genuine. No, no, no. It, it's, it's totally cool. It's just one of those things that that is one. It, when you look behind the scenes, yes, it's a romantic story. It's like, oh, those poor people. But I am a I'm a big believer in what people will do for money, and when it comes to something like, especially when you say when you do this, the, we've seen this in the movie. It's like no, 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 everything will be fine. No one's gonna die. It'll be fine. Well, as long as that boat's there, and and like the flares are going up, and the guy, you know, getaway driver. I mean, ba- so many bank jobs. The getaway driver is like, yeah, I'm not waiting anymore. He panics. Like he's in front of the bank. He's in front of the bank. He's like. Oh! leaving and he leaves the guys run out of the bank they're like damn it <laughs> so anyway yeah. sorry M- would, move on to your honestly, second thing i just wanted that to say would that for a better movie than the actual Titanic. <laughs> it would it would but the british government would never allow it so anyway right yeah what else you got uh right so i guess to to get into the flat like the flat earth movement in yeah. general just get into the nitty-gritty as i said mm-hmm. um I've heard a lot of arguments for flat Earth. I know they're not really consistent because there's different branches of it, different theories, like what actually what it actually is. So what I'd ask you then was like, what's your main, like the punchiest argument you can make for flat Earth? You just want one? The the main argument. Oh, okay, the one that gets most people into it. Yeah, uh, would be long distance long distance photography. That's it. Num- number one with a bullet. It's not my favorite, but it's, again, there's a perception. This is what most people, when I hear, it's like, how'd you get into the flat earth? It was long distance photography. In fact, they got into it before I got into it. Meaning when I got into it, uh, I was looking at, at different aspects. And the clues, I never once talked about long distance photography. But for some reason, a whole bunch of people started going down to the beach with whatever cameras. What's really changed things was HD technology. You couldn't do this 20 years ago because we didn't have the tech to do it. HD technology, what it's done is, oh, yeah, it's, it's really, really great for televisions. But, but camera-wise, oh, my God, you can do so many amazing things because resolution has gotten so much better at distance. So what happened was they would look at a boat off in the distance, right? And that boat would go away. Boat's gone. It's gone over the horizon. But then they would zoom back into the boat. And it'd be perfectly clear. And depending on, you know, atmospheric conditions, because remember what we're breathing in here is not nothing. And it would just get in and it was like the boat go off again. They crank up the zoom again. It'd be back in frame. Well, sooner or later, you got to factor in the math. And it's like, wait a minute, that that boat should be on the other side of the hill, a long way on the other side of the hill. And you say, well, it's refraction. It's like, no, refraction is only going to do so much. In fact, the only limit to what we can see off in the distance seems to be the thickness of the atmosphere. Because people have, all, have said to me, um, you know, it's like, why, oh, why can't you see Japan from California? And why can't you see Europe from uh, New York? And why can't you see Mount Everest from everywhere? Because Mount Everest, you know, should be visible from everywhere yeah. on flat surface. That's because, well, the thickness of the atmosphere, you can only see so far. I mean, record long distance photography on, on the ground is, um, is very, very limited. Uh, a couple hundred miles at best. But again, the curvature formula is, is pretty straightforward. So people start running to the beach and shooting lighthouses and boats and sunsets and all this other crap and they start coming back it's like because i was initially saying it was it was kind of like the orlando ferguson map that it was more like a roulette table kind of it was kind of a cool thing and and two things happened one they said again a little conspiracy they said no no you can't say can't compare it to a roulette table anymore i go why not they said well because all the numbers on the roulette table add up to 666 which is (laughs) absolutely true and I don't know who thought of that and who decided, but that's people, people do that, right? It's like, I'm going to add up all the numbers. And once that happened, it's like, 
it's the devil. I was like, all right, fine. So I couldn't do that. But people started saying, no, we're shooting, we're shooting objects at, on over bodies of water that shouldn't be there. And that's that was the number one thing that most people got into. I mean, I've got uh, four more, which are pretty good. But that's the one out of all the things. And people keep doing it. And they shoot lasers long distance. Um, they shoot because the lasers will punch through things. You know, it's like refraction doesn't care about lasers. Uh, or they'll do mirrors during the daytime. And just, I mean, outwards of, uh, you know, the lasers and mirrors outwards like 40 miles. And that's what usually gets people. Right, yeah, I, I've I've heard about that uh, a lot of, of the long distance shots, and I think I've heard like counter evidence to, to that, but I'm not exactly familiar with it. But you know, I'm just here to discuss it. You know, oh not, sure, not yeah, that's fine. Not, not but that's really that's what gets most people it. into it. I mean, again, if the because remember we didn't come up with the curvature formula. That's mainstream science, which is right. eight inches per mile per mile, which means that at like fifty miles, we're talking. Seven, almost 1700 feet of curvature and that's a lot and again you want to factor it say that it's refraction go ahead which is why we use lasers and why we use mirrors and stuff like that there's only only so much we can do but i've got others i mean that's just one that's just yeah, one that's... of a whole bunch of things so right so so as i understand it's like mostly like physical evidence or like uh the yes. like fault with our cognition because yep. our our minds are inherently faulty we need there's new technology that com comes up and we we kind of yeah, yeah, see and, things from a different perspective and I'm, now, glad, right? I'm glad you brought that up because there's this great line here i'll paste in the line you remember george orwell right the guy that wrote yeah. 1984 there's this great line and he was not a flat earther but it Is was it a, two plus two makes five no 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 it was this great thing where he was going you know he was basically saying that science seems to get away with an awful lot, meaning science, uh, people believe whatever science says. So he's basically saying here, I'll read this real fast. He goes, most people have asked to prove that the earth is round, would not even bother to produce the rather weak arguments I have outlined above. They would start off by saying that everyone knows the earth to be round and if pressed further would become angry. And he was basically saying that uh, that scientists should really not make assumptions. Well, basically, science figured out some time ago, kind of like priests, <laughs> that like whatever we say, people will buy it. And there's a lot of people out there that I've talked to. It's like, well, they're wearing a lab coat. So they're obviously more intelligent than me. And so well, we've got guys that wear lab coats on, on the street corners. And we you know, do flatter stuff, which is kind of fun. Um, <laughs> but the question is, he wrote that in 1946. So how did everybody know it was a globe in 1946 if NASA wasn't even founded until 1958? So 12 years later, how'd they know? And the, here's the thing. It's not that they know. I mean, there was no rocket program. They were told. And there's a big difference there, which is if you're told generation after generation after generation, then it just becomes, you know, absolutely, you know, I don't know what the term is, but it becomes this sort of, colloquial fact <laughs> which is yeah. you know which well, was passed down my father and his grandfather it's like we all know that, that it's a globe it's like yeah, really how do you know you, you don't you were told this at some point and the same thing with uh why the why there's such a big backlash you know from people it's like look there's a globe in the classroom right it's been there in our classrooms like when you're six years old and when you graduate 12 years later it's still there yeah it was just a toy that's sitting in your classroom but you stare at it. It's amazing conditioning, though. After, you know, 12 years, it's like, oh, yeah, I lived there. Absolutely lived there. Anyone doesn't think that is an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, um, have you been up there? Have you been in a rocket? No. But I know there have been people in a rocket. Really? Who? The government? They wouldn't lie to you about anything ever? Well, not about that. Why not? <laughs> it's like, you know, America. Amer it's like, and, and sorry, one more thing I got to throw in here. Which yes. is Americans, all American, well, a lot of Americans believe that we went to the moon, right? Because, yeah. because you know, rah, rah, wave the flag, we're the greatest, whatever, that whole song and dance. But I've asked a lot of people outside of, outside of here, it's like, okay, you in another country. I asked the group out in, I think, it was, oh, what was the conference uh, I did in Sweden? Oh, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. My, my memory's fading. Where I said, I go, why do you believe the Americans went to the moon? And the the answer was always the same. It's like, well, it was on television. And it's like, and and to quote the late Carrie Fisher, you know, Princess Leia from Star Wars, 
where she was being asked about reality television things, right? She was la- she laughed when they when they asked her. She goes, "If it's on TV, it's not real." And I go, uh, and she's and she was she was right. I can give you a whole bunch of examples where it, you know they push off things as being real. So the question is again, people believe people don't want to believe they've been lied to. Sorry, yeah. I am way off in the weeds. Go ahead. Oh, it's Fred, fine. Fred. <laughs> I'm I'm thoroughly enjoying this conversation, okay. as I said. Um, I guess I have a question here that says like, what sort of argumentation do you use? But now that I think about it. It's kind of hard to explain like what type of argumentation you would use. I guess uh, there's the like the formal argumentation like the OK, if if there's a thing and it's true, I can see it, uh, then it equals that thing like it, it implies that it exists yeah. for for instance. OK, uh, I see a glass in front of me. That means glass is in front of me. That means I see it like that. That sort of argumentation. Sure. And then there's there's like different forms of like formal logic that you would use. I I would not be able to explain it like very briefly on how it works, but there's like different types of arguments you could you can make like formal arguments. Right. But I guess if you could explain like how you like if you if you see a claim, yeah. uh, let's say for instance. Oh God. The, all all the conspiracies and like all the theories are, are uh, okay. Let let's cool. just say let's pick one. Like the, I don't care. uh let's just say that the moon is round, right? By the way, we How? don't we don't, we don't actually use the word round. We use the word sphere, Five, globe, or ball. Because remember, your dinner plate is round. Your dining room table is round. Right. But so anyway, so the, the 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 moon is a sphere. Okay. Moon. The moon is a sphere. How would you argue that the moon is a sphere, for instance? Argue for it. For it. Or against it, if you're so willing. Uh, does it appear spherical? Sure. Mathematically, can you work up some astrophysics to kind of say that it's spherical? Okay, maybe, but that's not going to... Remember, I work with the lowest common denominator, which is right. which is why I've told many a scientists, like, math will not save you. <laughs> In fact, if they go off on too much of a tangent, you know, like quantum physics or whatever, it's like, look, you've already lost 95% of the audience. So you might want to change your tech, which is I've also said one more thing, which is I said, the reason why science is losing to us on a right, why we just keep winning by attrition, we just keep picking up more and more people is because our answer is easier to understand. Yeah, like scientists and mathematicians don't, really make for good rhetoricians nope nope and they don't and they don't know how to and i've and i have i've heard the arguments i go look if you don't dumb this down for lack of a better term if you don't make this easier to understand you're going to lose and they said we don't have to that's beneath us i go and well, fair warning <laughs> i've told you know i told you what you have to do and if you're because the general public because you made it to where the general public when they got out of school don't know anything about anything the Americans especially, they don't know engineering or chemistry or, or uh, physics or any of this crap. Anyway, so sorry. So arguing for this, I would argue against it, obviously. Um, yeah. Mostly because of what we can do ourselves. So in a planetarium, I use the planetarium argument. I've, I've heard a variation of this from different people. I go, you're in a planetarium. Does the moon look spherical? Yes, it does. It looks very spherical. In fact, if you took an Amish person or a person, you know, from, from back in time, you brought in a planetarium, you'd blow their mind. Yeah. The thing is, though, it only looks spherical, meaning you can't touch Can you land on it? No. Why? Because it's just an image on the ceiling. Uh, and we only know this because uh, there's a projector right there. It's an image on the ceiling. So it's an illusion. Illusions are very, very powerful things. So I would argue against it because it's like, yeah, it looks spherical, but that's it. One sense, it looks the part, but again, we can if we can fake it to a certain point, if you know anything about magic, know anything about illusion, we can fake a lot of stuff. <laughs> really, I mean, come on. Hollywood alone has taught us. I, I, t- I tell people like the movie Gravity, you know, from some a couple of years ago, I go, you could intersplice the movie Gravity with just about any space promotion video and it would be seamless. Or go back and look how long we've been able to do it. Look at the uh, the 1968 movie um, by Stanley Kubrick, 2001, A Space Odyssey, right, which involved, you know, a lot of moon moon travel. It's beautiful. 
to this day. You fire it up on Blu-ray. It's amazing to see on an HD television that it's seamless, you know, the, the special effects. And that was done in the 60s. So uh, there's only so much faith I have. So, no, I could, again, the only thing I could argue for the moon is, yeah, it, it one sense applies to it, which is I can see it. It looks spherical. That's about as far as it goes. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's sort of like, uh, okay, how much can I trust my senses? Okay. I can trust my senses so far, but then yeah. I'm doing, doing the logic. Yeah. I'm doing everything that makes sense from a certain sp perspective, right? Exactly. Yeah. If it only touches on one of the senses, uh, then confidence is not high. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it is not again which is why well, i could walk outside yeah can i see the moon outside sure but now but ever since i got into this i look at it and it's like yeah not what i'm looking at anymore i never look at it now and say oh yeah it's 2,000 miles wide and 237,000 miles away nope right, yeah. not anymore <laughs> right and, and um, they went to it <laughs> the americans <laughs> went on it walked around and then quit in the 70s for no reason just quit yeah. And nobody's been there since. Nobody's even talked yeah. about going there. Been no budget so far. <laughs> and the, there's six six nations with launch capability. What the Chinese aren't going to go? Russians just gave up for no reason. Japan, nope, nobody's gone there. In fact, the Americans. We should have gone back years ago. In fact, the, I'll give you a quick thing. I was talking to a girl in um, Ireland, and I, I remember asking her. Big science girl hates flat Earth, hates it. And I go, I go, yeah. She goes, the moon, look, look what we did, the moon. I go, yeah, 1972, quit. I go, when are you going back? She goes, soon. <laughs> We're going back soon. I go, yeah, I've heard that for a while. For actually about 50 years now. So, whatever. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Honestly, I'm, I'm very, <laughs> I, would, I would like them to do another space mission if they can. So would everybody. So would everybody. So why haven't they? Yeah, that's a, that's a good don't, question. Don't tell me it's because of money. Don't tell me it's because of tech. In fact, again, I, I, like 1969 or 1968, how the hell did we get up there? With yeah, what I tech? I know that there there have been a few like orbits around, if I if I remember it correctly, from last year when I was doing a bit of research on the on the moon landing. But uh, yeah, there's no excuse for not for not going back. Do it. Nope. Just do it. Uh, all right. Anyway, to go move ahead. on. To, right to move on to like a very fancy term. Uh, from philosophy, we're uh, we're gonna be talking about reliabilism. Uh, okay. I'm guessing you can you can like assume what it is, but I'll 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 explain it since, no, tell since me. Tell philosophical. Me. Uh, it, it's essentially uh, a belief is justified when it comes from the right source. Now the question is, what source is good that it can justify your beliefs? And I guess the follow-up question to that, like which sources are reliable to you specifically to make your beliefs justified? And the core belief being like the earth is flat. And okay, so what's, what's a reliable source? Um, yeah. Ooh, that's a tough one, especially when it comes to flat earth because it starts with a negative, which mm -hmm. is everything you've been shown by the media when it comes to... The, forget about science. Science is just ignorant in, in that capacity. I mean, they built, you know, if the foundation is bad, then everything else. I mean, really, people say, oh, you're you're saying you're smarter than Einstein or, or um, Stephen Hawking. It's like, no, I'm not saying that at all. But if they were wrong, then they were wrong. Yeah. yeah I mean, you know, the foundations, because the, the I'll, you, I'll give you a quick um, uh, Nis, Nikola Tesla quote, which because oh he, 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 the what? <laughs> my favorite. He's oh, my favorite. yeah. Well, you probably know this quote then. The um, where he said that the problem with science is they never visit the foundation that their work was built on. So, you know, it's like, you know, this guy was on top of this guy, on top of this guy, on top of this guy. The problem is nobody revisits the foundation to, 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 to confirm the original premise. So he goes, when you get to a certain level, he goes, the hypothesis is worthless <laughs> because <laughs> everyone assumes everybody else before them was right. Right, you know, yeah. it's like, well, if this is right, then this is right, this is right, this is right. Like, nobody, nobody checks the uh, the original foundation. So when I say that we start off in a negative, meaning if we start off with a lie, which is everything that was that was shown to us by the government was was wrong, then the only thing we have is our on the ground observations. So everything in, in our community is based off of our own 
First of all, it's the people you can trust, and we've got a pretty good sense of that. It's really weird. It's tough to infiltrate Flat Earth. We've never had a fake Flat Earther get into the community. and <laughs> Well, I mean, at, at a certain level. Meaning because they, they can't fake it. It's weird. It's hard to explain. When you get in, you there's a certain – there's things you say and there's a mannerism about you that you can pick up with other people. Anyone that's like, oh, yeah, I'm in the flat earth. You know, no, they get sought out pretty quickly. Now, if you keep your mouth shut and your head down, you probably will survive for a while. But nobody on, on a certain level, any of the presenters, any of the conference people – um uh, they're all so anyway you have to trust those guys so yeah. there's an internal trust issue and then between those guys everyone has to know somebody so if you're shooting an experiment it's kind of like um uh you know uh the scientific method where you know um test observe repeat where there, it's not just one guy's experiment it's like, like a perfect example would be the moon temperature thing that yeah. that happened back in uh, 2016 where people came to me and said the moon is generating some cold laser light. I'm going, Tah. again, first response, always denial, right? I was like, yes. Yeah. And, and remember, I was into Flat Earth for at least a year when I heard this. And yeah, I was going, yeah, yeah. I'm going, what are you talking about, right? And then I, I started getting things from people that I trusted. You know, be, email me. It's like, yeah, dude, I completely did that experiment. It works. The moon is generating a cold laser light. It's, it's, it's basically colder in the moonlight than it is in the moon shadow by like 13 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going, what? And then, then uh, more and more people, and then finally some of the conference speakers that you know, people that I really trusted, you know, they're like, "Yeah, dude, totally real." And it's like, "Okay, so now it's a thing." And you again, you hear this, you hear it from enough people. You know, hopefully, that's what you're going with. It with us, it's it's repeated observations and or, repeated observations from people that you know within maybe one degree of separation so you may not know them personally but you know people that that know them and they can vouch for them and you have enough of those people you kind of that cumulative effect and yeah and it, and it just keeps there's a, there's a lot of cross you know i want to say cross pollination but it is kind of a, a kind of a cross thing where you're, you're hearing firings from from different people and again you you start to get the general consensus and and it works i mean and it's done very well for us so far and and so if an experiment goes wrong people the the bs gets found out it's not like it's like oh yeah we're on we're on with this and thumbs up for this no we've shot down stuff it's absolutely shot down stuff so. curtailing in the community itself right yeah so if i got it right it's like uh it's theorizing and experimenting within the community and the people you generally trust within it right yes Right, yes, okay. definitely. And and yeah, and because it's only our community. As the community grew, you get more and more facets and people with more resources and people with different angles and the reinforcement gets more detailed. So then you pick up different angles that you didn't didn't, didn't think of before, which is which is awesome. Yeah. So. What about like uh, outside perspectives or like outside sources? Would you ever like accept or like uh, humor them for for any, if, it's, any, if, it's, if it's mainstream, no, no. As right. a matter of fact, the the criticism of mainstream media, especially in America, uh, has been brutal after this. To where again, to where auto hoax is now a thing. To where I, I and it's true. I mean, I like I scan every morning. I scan CNN and Fox and uh, Russia Today, and because uh, they're they're actually fairly objective. And then some of the conspiracy forums just to see, you know, what's what they're painting. But if I like if I go to CNN, I immediately think whatever's there is there for a reason. And it's not and it's not there's an ulterior motive behind the scenes. And so, yeah. no, nobody. No, in fact, we have gone we've gone toe to toe with with mainstream stuff. You know, like yeah. when, the, uh, you know, when it comes to long distance photography, you know, like a weatherman saying, oh, no, that's a mirage. And and all of a sudden we have a lot of people. You know, again, the, the, as we grew, we get a lot more people with sp different specialties. It's like, oh no, that's not a mirage. Here's why. And again, the subject matter experts that uh, that would call yeah. me up unsolicited, by the way, they would they would call me up and say, look, I work on um, my company is one of few companies that work on submarine. We do the seals on on navy equipment, especially submarines. And he's going. He goes, the ISS cannot work the way it says. Because it, there's no freaking way. Pressure-wise, that thing would have blown up like a bomb immediately oh, yeah. with, with the vacuum pressure. 
and other people again you you run into enough now that would be as close as we would get to an outside source technically he's still in our community but they would let's put it this way when you it's again it sounds like a cult in some ways though or, or like oh well, i'll call it like the james Bond. it's like kind of like specter which is once you're in you you would reach out to us but if you're outside of a community why would you ever reach out to us for anything yeah. Uh, yes. you know, and, and if you're going to shoot us down, you're not even going to reach out to us to do it. You're just going to put it on your, your news network saying flat earthers are crazy. Here's why you're not even going to do a debate, uh, which yeah, is yeah. why we have done so very, very few debates with scientists, uh, because they just don't, you know, it's partially because it's beneath them. Right. There you go. It's like, it's like, well, we shouldn't have to lower ourselves to talk to flat earthers. It's okay. Great. Fine. While yes, you were saying the- that. I guess the all of the flat earth debunk videos that happened like five years ago or six years ago could have used a little bit more blood feud to, to like spice things up to, to debate with flat earthers. We, you know, we didn't have to we didn't have to worry about that too much because there were enough people that put themselves in made targets of themselves uh, like B, rapper B.O.B. You know, he was nominated yeah. for a, a, when he came out, you know, and made a song and and called out neil degrasse tyson the world's most famous astrophysicist um and then or actually just most most famous scientist and then um uh kyrie irving you know the the basketball player and then other other people every one of them took fire for us which is just fascinating because we we didn't ask them to they did it voluntarily so anyway go ahead um i guess uh, to close this off is like the final question of what makes you believe the people in your community or the people you generally trust to be reliable information? Because for me anyway, I can't speak for other people, but if the experiment can be replicated easily by myself, that's that's one of the big things for us. It's if, the, if you're going to do something and you say, okay, I think it's flat earth because... If it is easy to understand, number one, it's got to be, remember, lowest common denominator. That's how, it's like, people don't get it. It's like, you have to, that was part of why I got to do the things I was doing, because I used to do um, proprietary software training for years. Uh, And I would boil down these really broad, complex software things into very easy to digest pieces for these, for these factories. So if, if it is easy to understand, if it is re- easy, easily replicated by you, if you can do it, or if you, and if you can, if you don't want to do it and you know, you could do it, it's like, yeah, I don't want to go down to that cold lake, you know, at three in the morning <laughs> and shoot a laser, but you get it. If it's on, vi- there, there's an old internet saying that goes back, well, predates you for, for a while, which is, um, it was an old girlfriend joke, which was. You know, people would say, oh, yeah, I got this girlfriend, blah, 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 you know, it's like, but they never saw her and the nerds would be like, yeah. if it's not, if there's not video, it didn't happen, right? <laughs> and it was funny because it's like, it, they're not wrong, but, and so if the, which is why social media, if there's a bunch of videos about it covering different angles, you know, different, different things, that goes a long way, a long way. Yeah. For just one guy, which is why when we see a new video out by somebody, who does something there was a guy that like did um, long distance photography from an airplane and we were skeptical we initially did it from the beach with infrared during the day yeah. he used a special filter and then we were, we were skeptical it's like oh is he trying to troll us because you're always you're always worried that there's people that won't try to make fake things and and try to you know get the get the the community to bite on it and then you're like look they're idiots they believed in blah 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 uh, but if enough people did that same sort of thing, then you would um, uh, you would give credibility. What gave me credibility to this guy? He would he would go in passenger jets and fly, and the air is so thin up there that you can see farther than you should be able to. In fact, way farther. In fact, with the HD technology, with an infrared filter, you can fire off way farther. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of miles. What gave me credibility for that one, and this is the only time I would ever say you, uh, because it was an inadvertent outside source, was a uh, um, uh, was an Air Force SR seventy one pilot. You know the SR seventy one spy plane, and he was doing tours. He's retired now, and once he was retired, he wrote a book and decided to tour the United States and give lectures about how cool it was to fly a spy plane. 
I'm just like, yeah, it's a living, I guess. Okay. So, but what he would do is he would say at 80,000 feet, give or take, he could see distances that were ridiculously far. Like he could see Los Angeles from uh, Arizona. And he could see, and from the same Arizona vantage point, he could see all the way to freaking Canada. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, that's only twice commercial airline height. And I don't think he, it quite hit him, which is like, yeah, you know, if the curve is actually what it's supposed to be, you shouldn't be able to see that at 80,000 feet, not even close. And so what, but what he was doing was he was inadvertently reinforcing our guy in a civilian aircraft. And so like immediately right there, I was going, oh, yeah. Totally get it now. And I understood why. Because it was like, oh, yeah, because of the thin atmosphere. So, sorry, what was the original question? <laughs> uh, what makes you believe the, the sources you believe to? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just just re multiple reinforcements from uh, from different from different people. Uh, right. So, like, as I got it, it's like a consensus in the community and like the replication of experiments that you yep, do. Yeah. Enough replication from enough people that know people, uh, and there's video for it. You know, they can't just right. say, it. you know, they film it and say, oh, yeah, and our our data matches this person's data, which misses You get enough of that. And like, yeah. oh, yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much, I mean, any any scientist will be able to say, oh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's how the scientific world works. I mean, you have to be peer-reviewed, right, in the scientific yeah. world. You have to have different labs. It's like, oh, wow, this new form of plastic because we did this, you know, this certain temperature. It's like, yeah. So that's that's what we do, and we um, it takes a little while, and yeah, we do jump to conclusions, you know, out of excitement initially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I, at the same uh, time, the um, we the we shoot down most of the BS, and the the good stuff remains. You know, the cream rises to the top, and and it works for us. So yeah, right. So I sort of didn't expect there to be like a peer review system or like a consensus within the it, flat it's earth not, community. It's not formal. It's definitely not formal. It's just, uh, it, it's inspirational driven. So it's, 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 yeah, it's a good enough term. So where, um, you, you watch a video, it's like, oh yeah, he did that sort of experiment. That's you. That's really what happened with long distance photography. Once people saw their own thing, because again, it's easy. If all of a sudden it's like, oh, I can just grab my camera, rock down to the beach. Cause there's some, what it 90% of the population near lives near water, some sort of water. They just run down to the beach and they shoot and they say, oh yeah, I posted this video. And there are people just keep posting freaking more things. Um, and luckily for us, but again, really what changed the game was, um, social media. I mean, if it wasn't for YouTube, I mean, although if it wasn't YouTube, it would have been somebody else, but if it wasn't for social media, we wouldn't be talking now. That's, yeah. that's really what changed it. We, it was a peer, it, the peer review process doesn't take months and years like it used to. Now it can take weeks, Yeah, you know, very, very short amount of time. And, and within cool. weeks, you can get, I mean, look how fast we went. I'll give you a quick example. I know you got to go eventually, which is you, when you did uh, the initial search in YouTube, let's see, show you how fast it multiplied. Yeah. The initial search for flat earth in YouTube back in 2015, right? The search results were about 50,000. And that's not the number of videos. That's the number of references and all the things that are tied to it, you know, mentions and titles and, and all that. Point was three years later, we were sitting at about 20 million, you know, relevant search results. It was tracking that fast because it, it was more than anybody. We were tracking faster than anybody on, on YouTube. It doesn't matter how many subs you had. It's ma what matters is how many people are making videos about the topic. So like PewDiePie uh, <laughs> had 60 million subs at the time, which so many were fake. I don't really care. Whatever. Yeah. You can buy thicker ones. But the point was, when you typed in his name, it only came up PewDiePie equals 5 million results. Well, how is that even really possible? The point was, nobody was really talking. Yeah, some people were talking about him, but not as much. We were we were tracking at 20 million because oh. so many people were posting their own videos and then talking about those videos and making responses to those videos <laughs> because it was so polarizing. And, oh, we, had, we probably had half the number were, were trolls. Where people that were just making videos saying it's like, oh, I hate flat Earth. Here's why. Although there's some yeah. programmers out there that said no, it was actually more like like 75, 25 that were you know pro versus negative, which is why the government finally had to address us. Yeah, because yeah, they, yeah. what you don't want is you don't want you know again a kid typing in 
oh, Flat Earth and saying, here's why Flat Earth is great and you should look into it. Oh, that worried a whole bunch of people. So yeah, at some point, I have to step in and just pull mm-hmm. the trigger. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, anyway, uh, what I wanted to transition into the, like the whole peer review system and all the consensus is like the big question, which would be like, what do you think that science or like the scientific consensus is yeah. reliable in any way? Sure. Sure. Um, but it is not what they tout it to be. Meaning, Neil deGrasse Tyson said probably one of the most arrogant things I've ever heard. And I, I know he should have worded it differently, but he said that science is true whether or not you believe in it. And, and I know where he was going with that, but it came off as really, really arrogant. The problem was, is that science is only, what mo- I'd like to modify that. And I say, science is true until the day that it's not. Meaning science makes assumptions, they put stamps on things, and it's true until it absolutely gets overturned by something else. And I get it. It's human nature. People want to be able to rely on things. You never see science books with giant, like the the core of the earth. Great example. Should be the science book should be a giant question mark inside the earth, but you're never going to see that because science is like, this is our best guess. (laughs) It's a terrible guess, but whatever you but you, but they don't well it's like science doesn't like saying we don't know they don't they don't nobody does everyone likes it you know they you you people want more than that so uh, the, here's a great a great example um the uh, in fact i could probably put it in the thing for you there was a speech a speech i did and there's a picture i want to show you really fast which is i'll put it in chat so this fish here great example coelacanth fish you know, prehistoric fish, dead yeah. 70 million years, at least 70 million years ago. Every scientist in the world would have absolutely bet the freaking farm on that, would have bet every cent they had. Well, then the British government caught one off the coast of Madagascar. And then they caught another one later off of Mozambique. <laughs> and eventually... Uh, they had to cave in and National Geographic went swimming with them. So how did every scientist in the world in that field get it absolutely wrong? (laughs) Totally wrong. It's because they made assumptions like everybody else. It's like, well, we have the fossil records, the first picture. We have the fossil records and we know what fossils are. Therefore, you know, they they made the connections. Remember, didn't look at the foundations like, so what What if carbon dating is wrong? Well, it's not wrong. And so they had to make up terms. They had to scramble to try to deal with this stupid fish with a whole bunch of extra fins, which was, it's like, well, it's a living fossil. It's in an evolutionary state of stasis, meaning it's not evolving. Okay. And is, remember, this is just one fish. Uh, cryptozoology, anyone, anyone brings up that question. Is like, can science be trusted? Yeah. Okay, you want to tell me what the boiling temperature of water is at sea level? Yeah, sure. I can test that. Everything else, though, oh, you're, you're making kind of some assumptions. Cryptozoology, one of my favorites, which is the giant panda. Every scientist in the world laughed. <laughs> it's not real. The giant anaconda, not real. The giant squid, not real. In fact, they haven't even caught a giant squid yet, officially, because they're too big, they're too fast. <laughs> There's no way we're going to catch one. These things run down great white sharks, by the way, and eat them. <laughs> People don't know. They, they did a wonderful, wonderful test where they put a tracker on a great white shark. They <laughs> showed this thing running, you know, they were wa- watching the data. It was hauling ass trying to escape this thing. It got grabbed and drugged down like 5,000 feet in like 30 seconds <laughs> by <Yeah>. this thing. <laughs> it was like, oh, the crack in Israel, apparently. Um, so when it comes to things like, yeah, science can be trusted with some things. Sure. Test, observe, repeat. But when it comes to the big stuff, that's when it turns into scientism. That's when it turns into its own religion, which is the core of the earth. If you've only drilled down eight miles, you can't tell me what's down at 4,000 miles. You can't. And you certainly can't tell me what the other planets are when it comes to drilling down because they show the core of all the other planets too. It's like, what's that based off of, right? Um, the the carbon dating system, the Big Bang, 
Dark Matter. Dark Matter is one of my favorites. There's PhDs over here working on Dark Matter all the time. It's like, oh, yeah, that's filling in the the, the huge gap of the universe we can't explain. It's like, yeah, but it's a theory. Oh, it's a, it's a pretty solid theory. It's like, yeah, let me know how that goes. Um, so science, so, yes, science can be trusted, but not with – when it comes with thi- – when, when they make claims for things – that they have no way of absolutely proving it, then yes, we, they, they can't be trusted. Uh, uh, sorry, one more quick one, which would be gravity. Gra- gravity is a wonderful example, which is, in fact, Neil deGrasse Tyson, he has helped us more than he has hurt us. <laughs> he said that, he goes, but every, every scientist will tell you this. He goes, we can't tell you what gravity is. We can only tell you what it does. We can only tell you the symptoms of gravity. Yeah, I drop something, it falls to the floor. It appears to be gravity. Just because it's just a name we put on it. It's some magical molecular force that pulls things down to the center of a ball. Can you replicate it in a, in a lab? Nope. <laughs> can, you, can you make anti, any, any anti-gravity? You see, the problem is if they, if until they, the, until they release some sort of unified field thing where they can actually create artificial gravity, then it, it's, again, it's just a freaking theory. Could be density. Remember, if yeah, you hold a ball, if you hold a ball underneath the water and it pops back up, did it pop back up because of gravity? No. Pops up bigger big because it was less dense than the water around it. Yeah. So, and if it was helium, it would keep going, which is a whole other thing. If that helium balloon, if it didn't pop at a certain thing, where does it go exactly? Does it go to space? Okay. You know, and once it gets, uh, we go on. So, no. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, so, science can be trusted with very basic things that the average person can replicate or a lab can replicate. Sure. When it comes to theoretical things like astrophysics and quantum physics and quantum mechanics and all that stuff. No, you're just throwing darts <laughs> into, into, into a giant board and you're hoping people believe you. So you don't necessarily like distrust the scientific method or like the yep. ways of which they experiment or like do their research. No, you're no, just... no. no, I know. We're not going to go back to the dark it ages where we're any it science. Like the institutions, right? No, I mean, we're talking on the fruits of science right now. The, the technology we're using right now, wonderful stuff, which has evolved over a number of decades. Great. Science is fantastic. I, look, I'm a big techie. I love science. Yeah. However, <laughs> I, like, I like provable science, you know, uh, chemistry, wonderful science stuff there. But again, when it comes to the, the bigger stuff, not so much. Yeah. Not so much. Yeah, I, it can't. Cause again, if you can't, if they can't prove it for themselves, don't tell me. <laughs> even even carbon dating because our the the our human history here's here's the problem keeping it forget about astrophysics down here right where we are carbon dating our unbroken human history only goes back what five thousand years give or take so what are you telling me about stuff that's twenty million years ago the stuff that's thirty million years ago oh sure there's fossil records of certain things but again this is, sorry I want let's let's end this on a fun note when it comes to this so that <laughs> fish. For example, right? It's that fish, dead 70 million years. Loch Ness Monster, you've heard of it, right? Yeah, of course. Right, right. So is there, is there a plesiosaur or plesiosaur swimming around a lake in the UK? And you're going to say, no, of course not. That's ridiculous. There's no dinosaurs. Why not? Because the dinosaurs died off at least 100 million years ago. Oh, you mean like that fish right yeah. there? <laughs> that fish that's still alive? That fish? So don't tell me that there couldn't be some sort of reptile or reptiles swimming around Loch Ness. Because it uh, because it opens up a whole things uh, thing that science doesn't want to look at, which is the bigger question is not that they got the fish wrong is why is that fish still alive after seventy million years? Now you're either telling me that fish is that fish's lineage is seventy million years old, or maybe the carbon dating system is wrong, that it's not right. that old. Um, hang on one second. Oh, of course. So anyway, so if the carbon dating system is wrong, then the Loch Ness monster is possible. Then there could be plesiosaurs swimming around, and and all any of the freshwater lakes. So, yeah. anyway. right. Uh, another question you mentioned it before. Uh, this would have tied into like the the perception thing, yeah. Because uh, gravity, for instance, you mentioned sure. it before. Like yeah. uh, there are methods of testing it. Like you you feel its effects. You feel its after effects, right? Sure. You, you can see it, you can perceive it, but what, how, what do you, what, what is your answer to things or like, how do you theorize on things that you can't 
really perceive necessarily with just your perceptions. For instance, gravity is not, it can't only be explained by your senses. You need a theory for that. How would you explain the uh, gravity, for instance? Oh, I, I've explained it many times. I go, look, it's a magical molecular force that pulls things down. That's it. And it's, in fact, our, my perception of gravity is not much different from mainstream. It's only the side, I say it's pulling down to a flat surface. Whereas uh, mainstream will say, oh, no, it's pulling down to, to a ball. And there's, right. theirs is based off of mass. Mine is based off, I mean, most of it could be explained, by the way, by density. We're, we're easy enough to do. However, again, I'm from the tech world. So how do we make gravity in, say, uh, Fortnite? How do we make gravity in there? It's just math, right? It looks like gravity. It feels like gravity. It acts exactly like gravity, but it's just math. And we can make it anything we want. It's just a physics engine, which is fa I, th I find physics engines fascinating because oh, yeah. when you, if you stare at them long enough, you're like, well, what's the difference between the physics engine we have here and the physics engine that's in the game? Right. Right. I've seen like renders of water trickling down oh, an yeah. object. It's amazing to see. Ge it's geeks, it's funny. Geeks, the, the hardcore nerds, they all, that was the two things they always go after, is shadows and water. <laughs> it's, thing. it's like that's how, you, that's how you rate your computer simulation performance, which is based off of the shadow te lighting technology and the water technology. And the water technology is brilliant nowadays. Oh, yeah. In fact, we can do it real time now. We can do we can do virtual real time water simulations, which is just gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Hey, I've got to run to lunch in a bit. Do you have any? Is, do you have what uh, else you got? Sorry, didn't mean to like. Take no, 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 it's okay. No, it's all right. You're fine. Uh, I had like a few more questions, but they. Uh, no, related. no. What, 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 what are they? Are they long ones? Uh, it's just about mainstream media. You already mentioned that, so I won't ask you. We won't go into right, detail. Yeah, yeah. But uh, like the final thing, I guess, would be. Um, the status quo, or like the social or group think of yeah. of flat Earth, like how? Uh, hold on. Uh, is the goal of the movement? I I watched your video on the status quo, yeah. and one thing that particularly struck me is that you seem to have like a goal to kind of disrupt disrupt uh, disrupt it's, the status quo yeah. and to make motivate people to think uh, a bit more about what they believe or like what they. What they, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what what the scientific consensus is. Yeah. So is that the overall goal, or like what is what is yeah, the, the goal? Yeah, the overall goal is to wake people up, which is um, do your own research and ask questions. Don't just believe everything you're told, because <laughs> uh, we'll pick we'll, we'll tie this into media, which is mainstream media is owned by corporations, which are owned by other corporations, which are owned by even bigger corporations. And they don't think for a second that it's objective. There is no such thing as objective journalism. There isn't. Um, with the exception of, yeah, a car wreck that happens over there. Why? Because the car wreck happened over there. And you can drive over there and see it for yourself. Everything else is suspect, meaning it, figure out things for yourself. Uh, you'll be a better person for it. You will be more grounded. You will be more, you will learn things about yourself and you'll learn, learn things about your own beliefs. Which is you learn, it's like, like you were saying, why do you believe in certain things? You know, a lot of people are like, well, because that's what I was told. And it's like, yeah, that's fine. And if you're fine with that, again, if you wake up every morning, you got a good bead on things, great. Everything's awesome for you. Um, but there's a lot of people that want more. And if you've ever asked questions, if you've ever wanted to uh, find out, you know, the, I think that finding the, the best movies have deep plots. You know, multifaceted plots where you look in behind the scenes. I love flashback movies where it's like you get to a certain point and it's like, oh, yeah, by the way, this is all the stuff that happened leading up to this. Um, because it's like, oh, wow, that's you. Know, if you ever wondered why, you know, the details, the behind the scenes. Now, granted, it'll take some of the magic away. You know, which is why I, I hate like like people say, why didn't you ever get in really hardcore programming? It's like, oh, no, no, because that would take away all the all the mystery. Of it. It's like, you know, there's still games of this day. I do not want to know. I do not watch like behind the scenes videos, like why certain games were made because I don't want to know. It's like, I like, I like, I like the feel and the magic of it, but, it, but it gives you this wonderful sense of, um, 
being awake is one thing. Being enlightened is one thing. It's not that you're better than other people. It's just that you're looking at a different light. It's kind of like the out of the matrix thing. Yeah. Which is like, yeah, the people in the matrix, they're happy. They're fine. But if you're outside of the matrix, you have sort of a, a you have a different take on it, a different perspective. And once you have it, it's a bit, it's bittersweet because once you have it again, like the matrix, you know, where it's yeah. cy cypher was complaining. It's like, why, why didn't I take the blue pill? Because once you're, once you have that look, you can't go back. And so once you're there, you're like, oh, wow. Yeah. I know all this stuff. And those people in there, they seem to be happy, <laughs> but <laughs> But, but ignorance is bliss, and that's the one thing. It's like you're you're trying to you're trying to leave ignorance behind and and become you know someone who who um, who at the end again looking for that objective truth. That's what everyone's looking for. Everyone yeah. wants to know the truth. Again, tell the people only as much truth as they can handle, and the people that want to find it, well, you know they. Take in as much as they can, and some some people again they they'll only go so far. They'll look at some truths and just go, yeah, I'm not going past that line. There's a lot of conspiracy people that won't get into flat Earth because they can't. It's like no 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 no, this is my level of conspiracy right here. I'm not going to flat Earth. That's just way too out there. So, yeah. like, I guess our goals don't really differ that much. I always like to motivate more people to think about the things they believe. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That's, I, I, that's one thing we share at least. And if they and if they don't, that's fine. I I don't I don't criticize them for it. There's some people that just look like I, they um again that line from Men in Black where where it's like you know people like to think they've got a good bead on things. They know, they know things, but they um again ignorance is bliss. And I and I do envy some of the people sometimes because yeah. I I doing this it's it's fun sometimes. But other times you 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 want to be simpler. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, for, for, for better or for worse. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, anything else I can do for you? No, I I mean this this was a wonderful conversation. Thank you okay. so much for 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 even talking <laughs> to me for this I amount of time. I put some links in the chat, and as soon as I as soon as I um hang up, it'll build the thing for you, and it'll and it'll put it yeah, in there. Yeah. So the the Flat Earth Sun Moon and Zodiac Clock app, wonderful app that we we created uh, not too long ago. We turned on the Flat Earth Friend Finder. So out of the hundred thousand <laughs> people that got the app, I think a quarter of them turned on the Finder. So you can look at that. There's probably people in your country. You can zoom in on the map. Do you it's like if the there's anything around me? I wouldn't surprise me. Um, the the books I wrote, uh, the the guy that makes flat Earth models that was in the documentary. If you haven't seen the documentary, you really should check it out. Um, and then the George Orwell quote, and then that's about it. So, cool. Yeah, yeah thank you again so much for the for the conversation. Yeah, no, happy to. If you need if you need any other resources because I like helping out students, uh, just let me know. I'll I'll send you anything I got. Right. I'll okay. I'll probably need some some better. I guess resources or like more sources uh, in the future for for my project, but uh, well, yeah, if you, need, I'll, if you I'll, need other people, let me let me know. Uh, if there's anyone online that you want to get in touch with, I I either know them or I know people that know them. Right. Oh, oh my God, that would be wonderful. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Happy to do it. Right. Uh, anyway, thank thank you so much. I, All I right. Have, have have a good day in Slovakia. You got it right. <laughs> there you go. All right, man. See ya. Bye-bye. See ya.